Hello, and welcome back to The Sim. In this one, we're jumping into the PMD 737 from Microsoft Flight Sim and getting SPAD Next set up along with it so that we could start interacting like we did previously with the simulators in P3D. So here we are on the ramp at CYOW over at the BBJ area of the terminal, and we're gonna hop inside and get started. Okay, now that you've launched it, we've gotten through the compiling of the WASM stage, because that can take upwards of 10 minutes, and we clicked the Fly Now button, so we've dumped down into the cockpit like this. The first part is complete. It's now compiled and created the files in the locations we need them. So at this point, go ahead and exit to the main menu, and then exit out all the way back to the desktop and shut down Microsoft Flight Sim. In the file browser, we need to get to where the packages and your big Microsoft Flight Simulator blah 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 uh, folder structure is. Now there are different places. Steam version is uh, app data slash Microsoft Flight Simulator slash packages slash PMDG aircraft 737 uh, working thing. In the case of regular Microsoft uh, Flight Sim, we are going to go to uh, App Data, Local Packages, Microsoft Flight Simulator. Then we want to go into our Local State, Packages, and here is where we're going to find the PMG 737. And we want to go into the Work folder. And here we're going to find the Options INI file. And so you want to right click on this and edit with Notepad++. That's just because I like Notepad++. And then what we're going to do is we're going to go ahead and we're going to add an SDK section to the bottom. And so here, uh, we were actually told to also put in CDU broadcast uh, for dot one one. And for some reason, it looks like it removed that from my file. So this is what we would have liked to have seen. I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to save that and hopefully it doesn't overwrite it again. That said, I've only got one CDU so it's not a big deal if just the captain side left CDU uh, is the one that's broadcasting since I have one. So the key is we need the enable data broadcast so that's the SDK data so we want that for all of our LVARs and stuff and then we want the CDU broadcast for those of us who have CDUs. So that's it. Once we've done that and we've saved it, we can go ahead and shut that down. So next thing you want to do is come inside of SPAD.next. You want to go to your settings, to your application settings, FSX, P3D, and make sure that your PMDG 737, 777, 747 uh, is enabled. And as long as that is enabled, uh, you're good to go. If you didn't have that on, make sure to close and restart SPAD.next. Now that you've got those things done, go ahead, launch the simulator, and then hop back in. Now that we've launched the flight simulator and we've launched the plane again, and we are back inside of the PMDG, this is gonna work just like it used to work. So just for giggles, Let's focus on one section uh, up here, and I will use this uh, to give you an example. So we're going to go into SPAD.next, where I've started configuring the uh, VR Insight CDU. So as you can see here, we're going to take this section, which matched the section that we were looking at. And for the enunciators, well, everything follows pretty much the same way. So you click on an enunciator, you click on uh, an event, so you would add an event, and all we can do is change button light. So for any type of LED or uh, enunciator, it's, a, it's an LED light, and then you're going to add the conditions. And so now what you're going to be looking for is under your data, make sure that the 737NGXU is enabled. So these are the ones that just like P3D, these all work perfectly, it seems, for the Microsoft Flight Sim one. 
So with that enabled on the left hand side, I've now got my NGXU and everything is nicely broken up. So I come into my forward overhead and because I'm dealing with the flight control section, there it is. And I can delve down to just the enunciators. And so there you go. I've got all of my enunciator information and the state that they are in. So here, because this was the low pressure B, uh, I chose low pressure one, zero is A, one is B, uh, not a problem. And so we added that, and then when it's a zero, configure the LED to be off, we added a copy paste of it, we edited this, we changed it to a one, and then we changed it from an off to an on, and we want it to be on solid and permanent. We clicked OK and we had all of our information good to go so we saved it so I just copied and pasted onto all the enunciators and just changed the value uh, for the data variable next we got to our switches and so here what we did a little bit different is here I've got my overhead uh, flaps master and what I did here was I added an action send simulation event and you'll notice same thing I've got a list for PMDG and GXU and I came down and I found flight control and that filtered out my list so to speak so here we were working with the uh, alternate flaps so we have the alternate flaps but there's a guard and a switch and so what I did was I set up that when the switch is turned off we want to set the switch first to off, wait 100 milliseconds, and then we were setting the guard to off. Then, for the switch going into the arm position, first we wanted to open the guard, wait 100 milliseconds, and then we set the switch to a 1. So real quick, we'll hop back over, and you'll see that when I move that switch, it opens the guard, moves the switch. When I put it back into the off position, it moves the switch and then closes the guard. So all of that information uh, makes it really cool how we'll make the UI uh, follow along and do everything as well. Next up, we had the uh, flaps position. So this is the uh, flaps position switch and this is a three position, it's not a momentary. And so when we look at our spad.next UI for that, uh, you'll see that in the down position, we set the overhead altitude flap switch to a parameter of two. When in the off, we set it to a one. And when in the up, we set it to a zero. Uh, and as always, I had these backwards. I had this is zero, this is one. So the switch was backwards. I changed this by just clicking on it, edited that to a two. Now this is the part that's really important. With the switches, what you're going to see is this is the part of the um, PMDG uh, interface that spad.next has. So all this is like rotor brake type commands and it's all about the custom mouse events and the things you can do. So what you're going to see is that when you're doing or interacting with switches, you actually have all of the different methodologies. So if in the cockpit you just click a switch with a left mouse button, like a button, you can use a left mouse button. If it's something that you'd use a right mouse button, you can send the right mouse. If it's the middle mouse, the wheel click, you can send that. You can send double click events for things that needed a double click. You can do a drag event so that you can drag with the mouse button. You can do a mouse move, mouse repeat. You can do the release of the mouse. So when you're done and you release it. You can also do mouse wheel up and mouse wheel down. So for turning knobs, uh, this will be the event we send is mouse up, mouse down. And that's like spinning a knob. And then finally, for a lot of switches, you can use the on, off, and for three position switches, the set two. And so this is what makes it really easy to program the PMDG aircrafts. Okay, well, 
that's pretty much it. We just wanted to have a quick video. Thanks for tuning in. As always, if you haven't yet, please go ahead and hit that like button. Don't forget to subscribe if you haven't either. Come along with us next time. We're going to be getting into more of the interface setup for the PMD G737 as we focus on some more of the devices. Thanks for watching. Have a great day.